So I'm getting ready to start the process of cutting out the underskirt and um, I'm really scared. <laughs> this is the most expensive fabric I've ever purchased and I don't want to cut into it. <laughs> oh. Here goes everything. Hey y'all, how's it going? I hope you can't hear the cicadas in the background, but if you can, sorry, that's summer in the south for you. Hoping to do a pretty quick video today. You know, it would be really scandalous for a Victorian lady to walk around in just her bustle and petticoat. So, obviously, I'm going to need a skirt to go with my Haunted Mansion ensemble. This pattern was pretty quick and easy. It was one of the truly Victorian patterns. I will post a link down below to the pattern that I used. Uh, but it was just an 1870s basic skirt. Uh, it came together pretty easily. I didn't struggle with it too much, and it was it was a pretty basic pattern. No big deal. So I hope you enjoy. Come along with me on this journey, and I'll see you at the end. First things first, we had to lay out the pattern. The truly Victorian patterns are really great. The pattern comes with a cutting guide so I had to go in and make sure that all of my pieces were laying the way that they were supposed to and following all of the correct grain lines. This pattern also only had a few pieces. It was pretty easy to cut out and pretty easy to lay out. The big issue came in with realizing that I actually had to cut into my fabric. This is a beautiful silk taffeta from Silk Baron. It's in the color Victorian Frost, which is a dark purple with red woven into it, so it kind of has a reddish tint. Actually cutting into the fabric was pretty nerve-wracking. Like I said, this is some of the most expensive fabric I've ever worked with in my entire life. It was beautiful to work with. It has a gorgeous rustle to it. It cut very smoothly, very evenly, but the fact that I was cutting into fabric that cost me about a hundred dollars for the five yards that I bought was really, really tough. I don't normally work with silk, but for this project, since I'm so passionate about it, I really wanted to make sure that I used mostly accurate techniques and fabrics. Then I had to cut out the pocket. One thing that I love about Victorian ensembles is that they they always have just glorious pockets. Of course, I had to get some assistance. Hi, how are you? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yep, white hair, white hair all over my nice black fabric. Isn't that how that goes? Hmm? Are you my buddy? Are you my buddy? Yeah. All right, go. Go, go, go. Yes, go. He's such a good helper, even though he makes such a big mess. The pockets were cut out of a black cotton broadcloth. 
I did this because silk is expensive, and since this won't be seen when it's actually in installed in the garment, there was really no reason for me to buy silk just for this part of the project. The pockets required just the two. This Victorian garment in particular only has one pocket, which is going to be very interesting for me when I actually have to wear it. For this project, I decided to actually use some decent thread. I'm using some Guterman silk thread. I ended up buying way too much of it, but in my opinion, there's no such thing as too much thread. It'll get used eventually. Starting out, it was pretty simple. I just had to sew the darts into the waistband of the front parts. The skirt is shaped using just these little darts. For me, it was because my waist to hip measure didn't quite match up with the cutting guidelines. So the advice given on the pattern was to cut to fit the hips and then use little darts to fit the waist. As usual, I like to tie my darts off at the point. This just helps reduce bulk without the threads coming out. I don't anticipate them coming out, but I also don't like having a really bulky point in my darts around my waist. Next up was sewing the back to the side backs. On the left hand side, you actually leave the seam about eight inches, nine inches open at the waist. This gives you a way to get the skirt on and off. Then I stitched up the side seams for the left hand side. This skirt is pretty easy once you figure out the placement of the pockets and all of that. It's really not that difficult to put together. The biggest issue that I had with making this skirt was just the sheer length of these panels. I had to constantly adjust and shift the way it was sitting in my lap so that I could get the entire thing to go under the sewing machine. All of these seams were sewn with a half inch allowance as per the pattern directions. Then came one of my favorite parts. I love pressing. I just really love how you can take an item that's kind of wrinkled and kind of messy and just apply a little bit of heat and pressure and it smooths right out. It's just so satisfying to me. I pressed the side seam open to make it easier to fell down those stitches later. Then it was time to install the pocket. This was a very interesting thing. I have never really done a pocket before doing this project. So what you do is you stitch the pocket individually to each side of the pocket. So basically when you're stitching that side seam together, or you don't stitch this side together yet. You stitch the pocket to the wrong side of one panel and then the other part of the pocket to the wrong side of the other panel. Then when you stitch them together, as you'll see in a moment, you just stitch around the edge of the pocket. It was really interesting and a lot easier than I expected it to be, so I will be going in and adding a lot of pockets to skirts in the future.
as seen here, I'm just stitching it to the uh, right side of the skirt. This means that when I put the right sides together, the pocket will stick out in a way. It'll make sense in a moment. It's more complicated to explain it than it is to do it. Then I just had to stitch my way around these pocket edges. I've sped it up here a little bit because this took me a little bit of time just trying to make sure that everything lined up correctly. I back tacked at all of my corners and made sure that the needle was down so that I could pivot and make those sharp corners and sharp turns around the edges of the pocket. Stitching the curves was kind of difficult. I don't really like stitching curves in general, but I made it through okay. Had to adjust the skirt and how it was laying on the sewing table, but in the end I have a functional pocket, and that's what matters. Then it was a simple matter of just sewing up those last couple of seams to get the entire shape of the skirt done. And once again, lots and lots of pressing. For the seams that weren't on the side that's going to have the placket, I pressed them down to one side and then I ended up grading them all for easier felling. Uh, if you want to see how I do my felling and grading, most of my other videos have that. I was actually in the middle of working on another project at the same time and must have forgotten to get the footage of that particular step for this one, but you'll get a video on that other project here very soon as well. Then it was a matter of doing the pleats. By doing some math, I figured out that the pleats needed to have about three inches of fabric in them. So I pinned the skirt every three inches and then very carefully moved pin to pin to match that up and then pinned where that fold was. This wasn't perfect and some of it was done by eye, but it did lead to a very pleasing shape. Then it was time to stitch all of those pleats into place. I really love the look of pleats. I just hate having to spend the time to get them so perfectly. There was also a little bit that I left unpleated, as you can see there, that was for the placket edge. Because I do not sew over pins, this process took quite a while because I was constantly having to stop and start to take pins out of the pleats. I have ruined a machine by stitching over a pin before, and I really don't want to do that again. This machine has been with me for close to 10 years now, I think, and I just, I don't want to get rid of her yet. Finally, stitching on the waistband. Pretty simple. Waistband's a rectangle. 
I machine stitched it to the right side, so right sides to right sides, and then folded it over in half and hand stitched it on the other side. This was to make sure that the outside of the garment looked nice and neat with no visible stitching. Again, I forgot to get this on camera because I was in the middle of working on another project at the same time, but if you want to see how I do my waistbands, my other skirt videos, such as my petticoat and my bustle, both have how I do waistbands, and you're more than welcome to go check those out. In the end, this waistband came out a little bit wonky, so I'm not entirely sure what I did wrong. I think it had something to do with the grain line. It's not enough to make me want to go back and redo it, but I'm going to have to figure out how to do waistbands better in the future. And then, as usual, all of the pressing. I pressed the sewn seam up and the outer edge down <laughs> to make for an easier, more clean looking seam on the inside where I was going to be hand stitching that waistband. This was kind of difficult to do because that waist is kind of curved and it didn't want to sit flat. It kept wanting to shift in different directions. It, it worked, but it's not perfect, and it's probably the most egregious error on the skirt. If you have any tips for solving or preventing a Ripley waistband, I'd love to hear them. Leave them for me in the comments. And finally, the bane of every costumer's existence, closures. Once again, I just used hooks and eyes. I bought mine online for pretty cheap. I got over a hundred of each for like three bucks per bag. I'm also showing you how I graded my seams down while watching my YouTube. Easiest way to do this is very, very carefully. I'd like to get some little duckbill or applique scissors to make it a little bit easier to not nick the inside of the fabric, but my embroidery scissors work just as well. I do this so that all of my hand sewing can be done towards the end of my project, all in one go. And then I did my closures, which I did hooks and eyes. I got them fairly cheap on Wawak for like a hundred of them each, which is really, really cheap for hooks and eyes if you compare it to Joann's or Simplicity. I hate sewing them on, but I do love the look that they give, and so I was very careful, lined everything up, and went ahead and stitched those down. I also felled every single one of the seams on the inside by hand, as well as the hem, because apparently I like to do that to myself. Overall, I think everything came out really nicely, and I do really like how this skirt came out. Have it super basic, super simple. I love this skirt. I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited to get to wear it. The swish on it is something you have to see to believe. I love the noise that it makes. I love the color. The color is so pretty. It's the exact shade of purple that I was hoping for when I bought the fabric. Now we get into the more complicated stuff. The bodice looks to be pretty tough, so we're going to see how that goes. Overall, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like, comment, subscribe, all of those things that please the elder gods. Well, the algorithm, but the algorithm is an elder god if you ask me. In the meantime, I hope you and yours stay safe out there.